Welcome to Y-Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. This is part of our radio tech series and it's a lesson on understanding band, signal bandwidth, and device bandwidth. This information is supplementary to the lessons that we provide for our Canadian amateur radio training series. If you look at a modern radio, like the one on the picture, we don't see much. We might recognize that this is a dual band radio since it has two frequencies on the display, 145.410 and 444.400. These frequencies are in megahertz, but there's nothing on the display to tell you that. The first is on the VHF 2 meter band and the second is on the UHF 70 centimeter band. Now if this is starting to sound like gibberish to you, don't worry, keep reading and we'll clear it all up. Understanding the concepts of band and bandwidth are fundamental to learning about radio and communications. We cover what you need to know about the topic to pass your ham radio test in our Canadian Amateur License class in sections 4 and 10 of that class, but we felt like a more fundamental explanation is, or, is in order for the long term. So to better explain it, let's forget about amateur radio for a minute and consider something you already understand, AM and FM radio. So, if we look at a modern radio display, we'll see something similar to what we see on the picture here, say 99.1 FM or 107.1 FM. Now, an old radio display provides a lot more information. So, this is how radio dials used to look. It gives us a lot more information. It's like the difference between blindly following GPS instructions and looking at a detailed map. Now the dial clearly shows that the radio can handle two bands, AM and FM. The FM band goes from 88 to 108 MHz. The AM band goes from 540 kHz to 1600 kHz. The two bands are reserved for commercial radio. The radio stations are each assigned a frequency for their area within that band and they're not allowed on any other frequency. Most radios will only receive signals within these two bands. So to summarize, the commercial FM radio band goes from 88 to 108 megahertz, and the commercial AM radio band goes from 540 kilohertz to 1600 kilohertz, and we can see all that from this simple display. Now, if we want to get into more detail, AM means amplitude modulation, and FM means frequency modulation. So let's simplify that. AM, FM are two different ways of transforming audio or sound into radio waves. They're called modulation techniques. There are all kinds of modulation techniques out there for audio and for other things, like turning TV signals into airwaves and changing the bits of data in your computer into signals that can be carried over your DSL or your cable modem. Modem, that's short for modulator, for turning the bits into radio waves, and demodulator, for converting the radio waves back into computer bits. But back to radio. Amateur radio operators have separate frequency bands allocated for amateur radio use, and their radios are designed to both receive and transmit on these frequencies. Now, let's take a look at what's happening inside a frequency band. In this case, we'll go to the FM frequency band. We're going to use a tiny little device that sells for about 40 bucks. It allows us to listen to and to see the radio waves on commercial FM radio and on many other bands like the amateur radio bands. It's called an RTL SDR. The RTL part is because it's based on an RTL 2832U chip. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to you, but this is a very flexible chip that was designed for digital television. It can handle all kinds of frequencies and all kinds of bandwidth. And again, because it's for digital television, it was designed to, designed to interface with computer equipment. The STR part is for software-defined radio, and that's where the PC comes in. You hook this to a PC, 
the little device gathers up the signal, presents it to the PC, and then you can have software on the PC to do some pretty incredible things. And we're going to use that to show you what the signals and the bandwidth looks like. So here's our display on the RTL SDR software running on a PC. This is part of the FM band. We're seeing we're starting at about 97 0.5 megahertz on the left all the way to about 99.750 megahertz on the right what we're seeing here is two different radio stations uh, one's at 98.1 fm the other one is at 99.1 fm i'm going to stop talking here for a second and let's see what it sounds like we met in december and I thought it would last a tree Christmas Eve And I thought it was gonna Now we've got that muted back out again and uh, let's go through what's going on. So we have each broadcast on a center frequency this one at 99.1, this one at 98.1. The center frequency is the frequency of the radio station, the one that's advertised. Now we can see that the signal spreads on both sides. And so it goes from here, 98.0 to 98.2 megahertz. So that's 0.2 megahertz of bandwidth for this signal, or 200 kilohertz. We mentioned earlier that FM means frequency modulation, and the modulation is the method used to convert sound waves to radio waves. If we look up on the right, we see buttons here for things like NFM, WFM, AM, and a bunch of other things. AM is the amplitude modulation. FM or WFM, wideband FM, is for commercial broadcast or that 200 kilohertz bandwidth you could see here. It's important for the software to understand the demodulation technique that has to be used, otherwise it won't understand the radio. I'm going to go quiet again, turn the sound back on, and you'll hear what happens if we don't have the right demodulation technique. We're going to go from WFM to AM and then back. Children singing carol. And all I got for Christmas is a spirit in the. Okay, so all we got was a bunch of hiss, and it would give us pretty much the same thing when we hit narrow band FM. Okay, now, when we allocate a center frequency for a station, so if we say this one's at 98.1, we have to make sure that the entire bandwidth, this whole 200 kilohertz here, is inside the allowed FM band. So if you remember when we showed you our radio dial, it starts at 88 megahertz. We can't have a center frequency at 88 megahertz because it'll spill down by about 100 kilohertz below our 88 megahertz limit. So our lowest station we can have, our lowest frequency, is 88.1 megahertz on FM. Same thing at the other end where we go up to 108 so our highest center frequency for a channel is 107.9 megahertz. Let's recap what we've covered so far. Frequencies are allocated in bands for different purposes. We covered commercial FM and the amateur radio 2 meter bands. There are many other bands we didn't mention like emergency services, television, cell phones. No matter what the band is, you're allocated a certain amount of bandwidth for your communication within the band. We gave the examples of wideband FM at 200 kilohertz for commercial radio 
a narrow band FM for amateur radio at 6 kilohertz bandwidth. And your frequency that you give out is always the one at the center within the bandwidth. Now, if your head doesn't hurt so far, we've got two more concepts for you. One is device and tuner bandwidth, and the other one is frequency ranges. So your radio is designed to tune to the frequency and only listen to the appropriate bandwidth for that frequency with the correct demodulation. So when you listen to FM 99.1 on your radio, your radio only pays attention to the 200 kilohertz of bandwidth for that station and it's centered at the frequency of 99.1. But radios are built to handle multiple bands, bandwidths and frequencies. You've probably seen radios that combine AM, FM and shortwave. Let's go even further and take a look at the screen for our RTL SDR. Now, this screen was showing multiple radio stations with the bandwidth starting at the bottom left at about 98.750 megahertz all the way at the bottom right to 99.750 megahertz. That's a megahertz of bandwidth this little radio device is looking at. That RTL SDR is actually good for 6 MHz, which is the bandwidth of digital television, but it limits it for this radio application because it's going to do so much with the signals. The computer is sampling operations at billions of instructions per second so it can analyze and recreate the signals on these displays for you. The software can even handle TV signals to do things like 